So this is my Complete Control S61 Mark III that I've been using for about six months. And I think it's time for a longer term review. After having it for half a year, I have some thoughts and I discovered some insights that you'll wanna hear about. Hey, it's Ernesto, and on this channel, we explore the latest plugins and gear that help keep our lives musical and creative. So to begin, my, my keyboard has sat on my desk underneath an old keyboard cover that my wife made for me when I had the S49, so it doesn't quite fit all the way. Pretty cute, huh? When the cover is off, as you expect for a studio keyboard, there aren't any signs of wear or tear, but there are a lot of fingerprints on the big monitor display and the keyboard itself. And even though I have a cover, when dust gets on these rubber parts, man, that dust just makes itself at home and like never wants to leave. But overall, I really do like the design of this keyboard, like the upgrade to the single display instead of the dual display. It feels simpler and less cumbersome to use. And I really like the anodized aluminum encoder knobs and mod wheels on here too. It makes everything just feel more premium as it should because it's a premium keyboard. And I also like the updated button layout. They streamlined the buttons here a lot and you can really benefit from the less is more approach. The keyboard itself has a little less width than the previous model. In fact, it's 36 millimeters narrower, but 26 millimeters deeper than the Mark II. Um, I just wish it were smaller overall. It's a big keyboard. The weight's fine, but the height, width, and depth of this keyboard has such a big footprint, but maybe that's the payoff for all the great design and features you get built in. And I can't forget to talk about the feel of the semi-weighted polyphonic guitar keys. I'm guessing there's a difference and improvement for the Mark II, but I can't really tell the difference. When I first played the Mark III, I think I actually thought to myself like, oh, it feels like the Mark II, which I always thought felt good and wasn't in need of a big upgrade. Overall, I really liked this keyboard like a lot. And when it comes to my long-term behavior with it, there's three interesting things about this keyboard. Uh, one of them I'm using uh, less than I thought I would, and two of them I'm using just like I did with the Mark II, but having a much better experience. So first of all, Polyphony Aftertouch was a big feature that Native Instruments introduced. And how is it different than Monophonic Aftertouch? Well, I'm glad you asked. Pretty much with Monophonic Aftertouch, if you're holding out a chord and you press down on a single key, then the Aftertouch modulation is applied to all your keys, everything that you're holding down. But with Polyphonic Aftertouch, if you're holding down a chord and you press down on a single key, the Aftertouch modulation is applied to just that single key being pressed down. So now you can be more nuanced and more expressive when you play. So it is pretty great, right? Well, I did come across an issue or maybe a miscommunication. I was under the impression that Polyphonic Aftertouch would be compatible with all contact libraries. So I loaded up Electric Mint, which is one of my favorite electric guitars. And with Aftertouch, you can add vibrato to help it feel more authentic to a guitar. So I tried using Aftertouch and nothing happened at all. So now I had to figure out what was wrong with it. After some time, I figured out that you can switch the keyboard to monophonic Aftertouch by pressing the setting button and then uh, hitting these arrows here until you come across the Aftertouch setting. So once I set the Aftertouch to monophonic, Electric Mint worked as it should. But now I guess that means that Polyphonic Aftertouch only worked with certain uh, contact libraries. On the website, they showed off Polyphonic Aftertouch with the CS80V from Arturia, so I decided to try that out myself. And yeah, Polyphonic Aftertouch does work with this library. So yeah, I hope that I can come across more libraries that utilize Polyphonic Aftertouch because there's a lot of potential here. I hope even more that it becomes more obvious which libraries utilize monophonic or polyphonic aftertouch. Then there's integration between the Complete Control Mark III and your music production software. Uh, I love integration between hardware and software. That's still the biggest reason why I recommend this keyboard to all my friends. Now, when it comes to integration with your DAW, it works great and it's really thoughtful. And I even made a video about how easy it is to use this keyboard with Logic Pro. And since that video, they introduced integration with Bitwig Studio, which is my main DAW. Um, so I was really, really happy to see that happen. And I gotta say the DAW integration, it feels more polished. It feels really intuitive compared to the Mark II despite there being fewer buttons on the Mark III. On Native Instruments site, there's actually some great resources that clearly lay out how the Mark III integrates with your DAW. So I found myself solely using more of the DAW integration capabilities, uh, so much so that I feel like I'm becoming like a power user for this uh, Mark III. Now, when it comes to the Mark III's integration with Native Instrument products, it's improved, but talking about what those improvements are can get confusing. So I'm gonna spell it out a bit here. There's NKS2 integration and Contact 7 integration. And what's confusing is that they kind of overlap. 
Let's start with the next gen NKS2. NKS stands for Native Control Standard, and it's the digital format that allows native instruments and third party developers to take software controls and to map them across different platforms and, and devices within the native instrument ecosystem. In other words, it's the bridge between native instrument hardware and software. And now with the new and improved NKS2, we'll start to see improvements in three ways. We will see better parameter descriptive information. For example, if a knob toggles the routing direction, we'll see an icon that depicts the selected direction. We'll get enhanced navigation with the inclusion of control groups. So instead of blindly clicking the left and right arrows across pages, hoping to find that control we're looking for, parameters are now grouped together and you can browse them by pressing these top buttons. I think this is the best upgrade to NKS. This has the potential to make virtual instruments feel not sound, but feel less virtual and more analog. And the last improvement are improved visual identities. So now plugin art is more immersive and parameters can have custom colors. And I gotta say, it's about time that these simple updates are here. A lot of this stuff isn't groundbreaking, but it sure feels that way since we haven't received many quality of life improvements in forever. So that's what's possible now with NKS2, but I think it'll take some time to start really seeing the fruit of these capabilities as third-party developers start to embrace and make use of these next-gen capabilities and more. And my experience with it is that it is nice. They are, they are improvements. Um, and I've been a fan of NKS despite its quirks, but with NKS2, it is easier to use and a lot easier to love. Well, let's talk about Contact 7 integration, which is only Mark III compatible, by the way. The S-Series Mark III can now play and integrate with Contact libraries by just uploading Contact 7 in your DIW. So no need for a complete control, and the Contact 7 integration takes advantage of all the NKS2 improvements that we talked about. But my question is, what is the real improvement here? I'm still trying to figure this out. Right now, it just feels like I don't have to use a complete control plugin to play Contact libraries, so it's a minor convenience that they added. And if that's the case, I'll still be using complete control for my contact libraries because the complete control plugin allows me to use all the play assist features and create effects chains that I can navigate and control with the S61 Mark III. If any of you know why contact segment integration is important, then please let me know in the comments because I actually want to know. Now there's one big thing that we're all still waiting on and that's having fun with MIDI 2.0. And the fact that the S-Series Mark III is ready for MIDI 2.0 is a really great feature. The thing is, when is 2.0 gonna come out? The thing is, we have the hardware in place, but it could be years until we see more operating systems, DAWs, and plugins that use MIDI 2.0. So who knows how great a feature MIDI 2.0 will be in the short and long run. Now, if you have the Mark I or Mark II, you might be wondering if you should upgrade to get the Mark III. That's a really good question. Uh, if you have a Mark I, I think that's an easy one. The answer is yes. I would upgrade to the Mark III because there's a lot of improvements and you're gonna love it. Now, should you upgrade from the Mark II? Well, that's a different story. When comparing the two keyboards, the Mark III stands out in a few ways. When it comes to the hardware itself, the bigger high-res screen and the updated build quality and revised layout, those are good improvements. Not big or game changery but modest improvements. Polyphonic aftertouch is the biggest feature between the two. And when it comes to software integration, the NKS2 perks and Contact 7 integration, they're really nice. And I think they'll feel like bigger upgrades as native instrument and third-party developers really push the capabilities of NKS2. I think the biggest question mark is what's gonna happen with MIDI 2.0? If it changes everything for the better, then I think you'll want the Mark III, but I think we just have to wait and see on that one. And if I had to summarize the Mark III, I would say that it's a great keyboard today, but might be even better tomorrow. It's not so much future proof, but it's like future ready. So right now, if you ask me if you should upgrade from the Mark II, I'll say, sure, if you want to, but you really don't have to. The Mark II isn't too far behind. But if you ask me that question three months from now, or even after MIDI 2.0 is released, I'm hoping that my answer is more towards an emphatic yes. But look, after six months, I still really love my S61 Mark III. I think it's a good looking keyboard, it's super functional, it's just great overall. And the integration it brings to my DAW and plugins, it just transforms my workflow. And I'm still really excited that I get to use this keyboard and all that it brings every day. Now, if you wanna check out a compact, more affordable and feature-rich keyboard, then check out my video on the Mini Lab 3 from Arturia. Thanks for watching, later.